The lumbar region of the spine, more commonly known as the lower back, consists of five vertebrae labeled L1 through L5. The lumbar region is situated between the thoracic or chest region of the spine and the sacrum. It typically has a slight inward curve known as lordosis. The lower back region contains large muscles that support the back and allow for movement in the trunk of the body. Muscles can spasm or become strained, which is a common cause of lower back pain. The five vertebrae of the lumbar spine are connected in the back by facet joints, which allow for forward and backward extension, as well as twisting movements. The segments in the lumbar spine, L4, L5, and L5-S1, carry the most weight and have the most movement, making the area prone to injury. In between vertebrae are spinal discs, which cushion the joints of the spine and provide support. Lumbar region of the spine are most likely to herniate or degenerate, which can cause pain in the lower back or radiating pain to the legs and feet. Low back is an extremely common health problem. In fact, approximately 80% of the population will experience back pain at some time in their lives. It is the leading cause of absence from work throughout the world. It may prevent people from leading active lifestyles. And it causes an enormous economic burden on individuals, and families. It is said to cost the South African economy more than 2 billion rands annually. So there's a very good chance that you or someone you know may be or have experienced low backache. So what causes backache? What do we do at work or at home that put us at risk for backache? Is it preventable? Is it curable? How can we protect and take care of our backs? Our guest panel today is comprised of people who specialize in backache and includes a spinal surgeon, an ergonomist, a biokineticist, and a physiotherapist. So sit back, relax, and learn from this exciting show ahead. Your questions or views are always welcome, of course, and the telephone numbers to reach us at is Johannesburg 714-6841-6842 or 6843. You can also tweet us at SABC Health Talk or simply interact with us on our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk. I'm Dr. Salomon Daung, and this is Health Talk. Back pain is a common problem that affects most people at some point in their lives. Lower back pain may be triggered by things such as sitting awkwardly, poor posture, bending, lifting heavy objects or old age. Older individuals are more likely to suffer from pain related to degeneration of the joints in the spine. The pain is not generally caused by a serious condition. Ryan Butterworth, a physiotherapist who has been treating, assessing and preventing human movement disorder for over a decade explains why older people suffer from back pain. The first thing is just while you're aging, and so because you're aging, your bone structure changes and that's normal. Can we help you with that? Absolutely. What does the research teach us? Move, 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 and then move some more. So again, coming back to those risk factors, older people who use the pain as an excuse to not do anything get worse. However, Young people can also be affected by lower back pain. And from a very young age, I said from about 25, um, I started developing lower back problems. It wasn't really a problem between the ages of 25 and, and say 32 because I was still quite fit. And uh, you know, obviously, as we um, get into our careers, we, we do less and less sport. Uh, and with that, and my fitness levels going down, the uh, back problems just became more prominent. Um, I wouldn't say it's debilitating, but it does influence my life in a sense that, you know, just doing simple tasks like bending down, trying to pick things up or trying to pick up my son. Studies show that lack of physical activity in one's daily routine leads to loss of muscle tone, mostly in the lower back, which reduces the strength of the spine and can lead to back pain. Here is advice for young people to avoid future back ache. But generally, young people shouldn't be getting pain. But the unfortunate reality is that in my practice, I'm seeing kids at a younger and younger age. And so the first reason for that is what we call pathological. If you're born with a disease of your spine or you develop a disease of your spine, that's not normal anatomy. And so that's a different case. But again, it ties into the inactivity. We, we have kids who are spending less and less time outside. You don't see developers building houses. You see them building complexes. So kids are not running in the garden, they are not climbing trees, they are not doing normal things to develop their bodies. Most cases of lower back ache do not require urgent care, 
unless it is a major incident, but people are advised to see a specialist immediately. The moment you have an injury, don't just shake it off. Don't think because you're young, you're invincible. Um, your body will come back later in life and, and tell you that there's a problem. So um, if you think it's a major injury, go see a physio, go see someone that can treat you, make sure that it's not something that can, that's going to recur. Because ultimately this is where I've ended up, because I didn't do that. And this is just a recurring problem that is now at a level that has to be treated on a weekly basis for me to uh, be rid of the pain. How people stand, lift and lie can all affect the health of their back. Try to avoid placing too much pressure on your back and ensure it's strong and flexible. Okay, now to learn a lot more about backache, it's a pleasure for me to welcome to our discussion Dr. Louis Nell. Dr. Nell is a spinal surgeon from a company called Spine Africa, and that practice is based in Pretoria. Welcome to Health Talk, Dr. Nell. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right. Let's start with the basics. I mean, we, we're talking about a very important region of our body, the lumbar spine. Why is this area that important? What, what, what are the functions of, of, you know, this area of the spine? I think, you know, the, most, the, the reason why we have so much problems with the lumbar spine, you know, is actually, you know, aging that we see mostly and the way that we use and misuse our bodies that right. actually precipitate problems and pain. Right. Okay. So, 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 I mean, we, 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 we told that it's an area that supports, you know, uh, a greater part of our, the weight of our mm. body. Uh, how important is that? And, you know, in terms of the, the symptoms we'll, we'll get? Just, just due to gravity. Yeah. You know, as we degenerate, the spine degenerates. The yeah. lower part of the spine takes most of the stresses. Okay. So right. as we degenerate and we see symptoms coming from degenerative discs or yeah. facet joints or so on, most of the stresses are carried there. Yeah. And the way that we use and misuse our bodies every day actually can precipitate that or make that worse. All right. We're going to talk about how we misuse our bodies, but, but let's talk about the, the basic stuff. I mean, you, you learn of lower backache, obviously. Yes. Um, uh, and then you, you get certain terms like sciatica and radiculopathy. And just take us through what okay. all these terms mean. So um, if you take radi radiculopathy, radic radiculopathy it's, it's actually a compression or irritation of a specific, specific nerve root. Yeah. It helps the surgeon and the doctors to actually diagnose according to the patient's history where exactly where the pain is coming from. So mm. if you have a radiculopathy, it's a specific nerve root that actually being pinched or irritated that actually supplies a specific area in your leg or in your coming from the lower back especially in your leg. So how does it differ from uh, you often hear terms like lumbago and sciatica? What, lumbago what? is just the common low back pain. Lumbago right. is back pain. So okay. it's the unfortunately what we see is that there's a lot of conditions that actually precipitate low back pain. Mm -hmm. So the most common ones, as I've said, is just degeneration of the lower spine. That's the most cro con common chronic low back pain. But there's also some intra-abdominal conditions that can give you back pain, even some chest injuries and injuries to the muscles. So everything, everything in the re very much referred to the lower back. Mm -hmm. And that is sometimes a symptoms of other problems as well. Okay, so, so essentially what you may feel as pain in the lower back it's not may not really be coming from the spine, that's what that's you're saying. That's true. Mm -hmm. So let's, let's talk about, okay, this time let's, let's focus on the lower back and perhaps you can guide us through the spine to say, um, Symptoms, symptoms and okay. sign. I mean, what, what so, do people... So the most common symptoms that, symptoms that we see is actually just low back pain. Right. So um, as we degenerate, you know, we get older and the blood supply to the cushions gets less at about 20 years of age. Yeah. And what we find is that mostly due to micro trauma over the years, the end plates of the vertebral bodies degenerate. Yeah. They become harder. The blood supply to the cushions go down. The cell starts dying. Yeah. And due to the cells dying, we see that the, the cushion can't support the body, so it loses that normal cushioning effect. Yeah. The cushion starts bulging, mm. and just due to the micro instability, it can give you back pain or irritation of the nerve root as it comes out of the spine, can give yeah. you the nerve pain into the leg and so on. Those are the most common part of the lower back uh, symptoms. Because uh, I was going to ask you about you know, that pain now, to say, mm. you know, are there different grades of the pain, different types of the pain? Just now you said pain 
you know, localized to the back area. Mm. And, and what is the significance of that pain going down the legs, for instance? If you, if, if you have local... The, the, if the pain starts going down the leg, which you call, talk about radiculopathy or, or sciatica, mm -hmm. you know, the problem is that we, it needs to be um, more looked at because it's not a just general back pain. It means that there's some nerve root compression or irritated of the nerve irritation of the nerve root, which needs to be. It's in a lot of sense, yeah, times you know it needs to be addressed. Okay, all right. At this okay. stage, so most of the common sort of a back pain yeah. that we see is relatively acute. It's, yeah. used to, it's due to strain or small injuries that the patients okay. have due to the general everyday lifestyle. Right. Those can be treated very conservatively. I want us to take, some take that a little bit further in terms yeah. of the common causes. But for now, let's take a call on that. And we have Tammy from KZN. Tammy, welcome to Health Talk. Morning, morning, Dr. Phil. How are you? Good, how are you? Morning, morning to the neurosurgeon there. Hmm. I'm a GP here in Lady Smith, man. Yes. Close to 50 years old. My, my weight is about 89. Yes. Uh, I think my BMI is, it sounds okay. Right. But I do exercise rarely sometimes in the morning when I run around or playing with football for the oldies, you see. Yes. But uh, after that, maybe I get just that mild changing pain. That's my, I've never done an x ray or anything. But when I don't do anything, nothing happens. So you only so, get the pain when you exercise? When I just do a run around for about one or two kilometers, All right. then, well, it, then it comes. Okay, thank you, Tommy, for your question. We'll try thank and you for get... the next program. I suppose we should start getting some CPD points All right. from that every morning. All thank right. you. All right, thank you. Do you want to just tackle that question? I mean, just, he, just say again, so he's 89 so he's, he, years old. He weighs, well, no, he's 50 years old. Oh, 50 he weighs years 89 kgs. He says whenever he tries to do exercise, you know, he gets pain. But when he's not exercising, he doesn't get the pain. Okay. Um, I know it's a bit of a difficult one sometimes yeah. to, 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 you know, to diagnose things, especially based on this. Um, but generally speaking, what would you say around somebody that develops pain when he or she tries it, to exercise? It, it depends on how bad the pain is. That's right. the first thing. And the second thing, um, you know, a lot of things that we treat is actually a quality of life right. treatment that we are giving. Right. So if this guy experiences, you know, pain is, a, is, is something that, from your body that tells you that you're either doing something wrong right or that you have to change as a matter know, the of way fact, that you fact, are doing we, it. we have a biokinetist that we're going to interview yeah. later who'll tell us about the proper way of doing exercise such yeah. that you know you don't get so pain. it's very but much just dependent let's, let's just on the, how much the pain is whether he needs to yeah. you know can just go through with the exercise without taking pain medicine how right. bad is it is you know how long does it last Okay. And so on. So let's so back to some of the serious. commonest causes before we go for a break. Mm. Commonest causes of low back. What can go wrong in the spine? You mentioned degeneration. What are the other issues that can affect the most the common back? thing that we see is degeneration? And right. if you have an acute sort of an injury, you can actually tear the cushion where the cushion can come out and you right. can have a disc herniation. Right. There can also be strains and strains of the fascia joints or all those com structures supporting the lower spine, the fascia joints. Mm -hmm. you know the muscles and so on mm -hmm. most of that needs to be treated conservatively it's sort of acute pain it doesn't last long mm -hmm. you know it can be treated with pain medicine or going to the other subspecialities that specialize in conservative treatment mm -hmm. and it's usually a short-term sort of a thing okay all right. it gets better Perhaps it's, it's it a good away. note to just pause a little mm -hmm. time for a quick commercial break after the break we'll, we'll now look at causes and risk factors for back ache. please stay with us Shield Medical Scheme. We don't just talk health, we do health. It's so good, nothing else can replace just your slightest embrace. And if you only would be my own for the rest of my day. I will whisper this phrase, my darling Ceci Pong. 
MedShield Medical Scheme doesn't just cover you when you're ill, we'll help you stay well. There's four main predictors of, of chronic lower back pain, so people who don't get better. And that's people with a sedentary lifestyle, so people who don't do any exercise and sit behind a desk all day, which is most of the population. People who've had back pain before, and we've said that's 90%. People who expect a passive solution, so they're not prepared to do anything. And people with what we call some yellow flags, some psychological things. And so those are the big challenges, because if you're coming to see me for back pain, but what I don't actually know is that you lay bricks all day and you're picking up heavy bags of cement if we're talking about a laborer for example that's going to affect his back and I can't understand why he's not getting better and he's getting frustrated and that's when we use things like that. The opposite example is, is the computer person so you know people are sitting these days 60 minutes one way in traffic so you're sitting in a car where you're not really moving and you know cars are not really designed for our backs and then you go to an office and you sit behind a desk and you don't move and you progressively sit worse and worse and then you do no physical exercise all those things are going to add up to chronic lower back pain mm. so some of those things that we do that put us at risk for backache it appears that uh, you know we do these things without even thinking about them anyway we're going to hear more about this we still have dr louis nell spinal surgeon from spine africa and it's a great pleasure to welcome esmeralda kellen Esmeralda is an ergonomist from Ego Focus. Welcome to Health Talk. Thank you. But before we speak to you, I believe that we have Margaret from somewhere to Margaret, welcome to Health Talk. Hey, good morning, Doctor. Mm, your, your question or comment, please? I've got a question for Dr. Nell. Um, in May, I went to do a spinal operation. Yes. And I don't know what's happening with my pelvic bones when I turn around on the bed, like when I'm sleeping at night and waking up, getting out of the bed in the morning. I have a difficulty like standing up straight. I have to be so slow and cautious. And does it, is, it, is it about the spine operation or is it some, has it got something to do with the operation? All right. Do, do you want to perhaps ask her one or two questions? Now? I just didn't hear the full thing. She, she's just had spinal surgery and, and she seems to have a problem when she stands up. She feels a bit of you know, pain and discomfort. Okay. So how yeah. long ago did she have the spine In surgery? In May. In May. Mm. And, and what type of surgery did you have? An open surgery, like they had to open the back on the spine between the T10 and the T12. Uh, what the doctor said, uh, the neurosurgeon, is there was an infection on the spine. Okay. All right. Th thank you very much, Margaret, for, 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 for your question. I mean, some of the things we, we may not be able to get into yeah. great so detail, but perhaps you can just talk yeah. in general in terms of this what should happen. This is about four months after surgery. You yeah. know, she should have been better getting up. Yeah. It's very difficult to say because we're not exactly sure what they did. Yeah. You know, it sounds like it's not the normal general sort of problem that she had because it sounds like she had an infection. Yeah. So we need to know how bad the spine was affected. Okay. You know, whether they put in instrumentation, whether they fused it, how long the surgery was. Yeah. So it takes, it for an average patient, it takes about a full year yeah. to get over a back operation. Right. But at four months, you know, it needs to be I think she needs to be better at this stage. Okay. Just we'll talk a little bit more about rehabilitation when we talk treatment sure. because I think that's, that's another important area because sure. we don't know whether she's seeing a physiotherapist, a vacuoliticist and so on. Okay. But we'll, we'll get back to that. Esmeralda, we're talking about this very important subject, backache, very common. Yeah. Now, uh, you obviously, in your daily duties, go around looking for risk areas at the workplace. Tell us a little bit about what you do as an ergonomist. Um, well, basically you can start with the word ergonomist. Um, yeah. The word ergo means um, work and nomos means knowledge. So right. basically what an ergonomist does is we have basically a lot of knowledge um, around the workplace. Um, so we basically what we try to do is ergonomics is the science of trying to fit the work environment or the, the work um, station around the worker instead of what happens now a lot where the worker has to adapt themselves to the work environment. Mm -hmm. Like you saw in the inserts if you've got bricklayers or people in the office that have to assume awkward postures or static postures yeah. um, for 8 hours or 12 hours a day in the same way that um, aggravates the, uh, as the doctor said, the degeneration.
inflammation um, um, of the lower back and causes pain. Let's start in the office. You know, I mean, uh, technology is advancing. Yes. You know, we, we tend to use laptops and iPads and all sorts of stuff, um, you know, on a regular basis. And we spend quite a lot of time in the offices. What are those things that you find or you see in office spaces that are a risk factor for low backache? Um, well, it's, uh, you have to actually look at the whole office workstation as, as a whole. So you start with the, the, the basic um, um, tool in the office is your, your work chair, um, which often um, lacks any of the five ergonomics principles that it should be equipped with. And then you look at uh, the so height. So what, what are those five? Um, um, uh, basically that your chair is in height adjustable, that you've got an adjustable backrest or an adjustable um, lumbar support because often if it's fixed it's too high or too low so it's either pushing you forward or um, people don't want to use the backrest and start sitting on the edge of the seats and then they start um, um, working in a forward flex posture or um, they don't have armrests that go up and down and in and out where am I at number four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, <laughs> so, so basically the design of the chair. Yes, right. uh, which lacks often basic ergonomic principles, so the chair cannot be adjusted to the office employee. And then, of course, you've got your, your keyboard, your mouse, and your monitor. Right. So often people work now with laptops, and they use their laptops as a, as a dual screen set up with a um, 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 second screen, and then they... Um, put them up at the wrong heights and therefore they caused haunched postures for eight to uh, ten hours a day. Mm. So you don't go to the gym for um, eight hours a day either. So having to sit in one single posture for so long um, 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 reduces the blood flow through your muscles and mm -hmm. actually aggravates um, uh, stresses on your spine. So, so, so I hear you say the height of the screen is important. Yes. But with a laptop, I mean, you're always looking down. So, so what should people be doing? Um, they basically should be able to set up the screens um, on, um, at the same level of the height so that the workstation is dictating you as the employee to sit up straight mm. instead of haunching down to your laptop, for mm. example. Mm -hmm. The same with your keyboard. If you keep it close by, instead of having to reach forward and then look at your documents and then to your screen the whole day, in the end you start sitting and leaning with your, your, your elbows on the table, mm -hmm. which um, puts your back in a very awkward posture. Mm -hmm. Dr. how much of awareness is there around these very issues? Very, very little. Mm. Um, this is a very common thing that we see, and the problem is we adapt to everything as we go along in life. So if you get back pain, you can actually see the patient sitting in a certain way and teaching themselves, you know, to keep on going and not doing it right, you mm -hmm. know, every day of their life. Mm. You know, unfortunately, a lot of stuff around us is not built for people that are taller. Yeah. You know, so for example, these desks should be higher that we can comfortably sit and write. All right. Well, you know, we, we're taking up note of that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But it's actually a very and common that, sort of a thing. And also now you have also a patient that's not in a general good condition. He doesn't have a good lifestyle going yeah. to eight hours a day. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of other factors that play a role. But this, what she says, is extremely important. Yeah. Yeah. You know, okay. the phone is always on this side at the certain night. Patient for eight right. hours a day for many years, yeah. you know, okay. actually does something the same way. Let's it's take Katleha on the line. Uh, Katleha, welcome to Health Talk. Thank you, doctor. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thanks. Um, a couple of, well, actually last year I was uh, diagnosed with spondylolysis, and right. I'm just trying to remember which type it was. Yeah. And so I went for physio, and uh, I also saw a biokineticist. Right. And I've been doing the exercises that they have been telling me that I should do, but my back is so sore. There's no uh, difference. Okay. It even went as far that my medical aid was exhausted because of all the trips that I've been going to see doctors. All right. So what okay. can I do just to ease the pain? All right. Let's see if Dr. Nell can help you on that one. Uh, about 80 or 90% of patients with back pain gets better over time. <laughs> so it's very small percentage. It's about 5% of patients that we need to do something surgically for. There are, is also unfortunately a problem in general society that there are certain people that shouldn't be treated conservatively. You know, so if they get diagnosed properly right from the beginning, you can see that they're going to end up having surgery. They're just so, too so young, too long. So with the spondylolysis, it's, yeah. it's usually a loose part of the spine. It usually occurs at the bottom and it can be a lytic one where you actually have a breakage in the bone. Right. But with a normal degeneration, we see a slip of the spine and we get compression of the nerve roots. Mm -hmm. So there are certain conditions that 
I don't say that she needs surgery, yeah. but also if you t start treating somebody for a long time conservatively, yeah. it becomes very, very expensive. So what expensive. should she do? She should go and see a specialist so that they can do a proper diagnosis and ex exactly see what's going to happen in the long run. Okay. There's certain patients that you know is going to have to have surgery. Okay. Lastly, yes. manual labor, you know, hard labor. Yes. We, talk, we spoke about office, office. You know, are there those other issues that perhaps, you know, you come across in terms of manual um, labor that put us at risk? In, in the factories um, that you see or in industry around us, for example, in the mines, you've got a lot of um, um, people that drive the, the heavy mine vehicles that are exposed to, to a lot of noise and vibration. And the vibration part also aggravates um, back pain because they're also sit at, in, sitting in awkward um, postures. Yeah. And just in construction, you see people lifting heavy loads um, the whole day for yeah. eight hours a day. And that repetitive um, part of that um, aggravates because you can't heal fast enough. Mm. You don't have enough recuperation time and then you go and lift the next load again, yeah. which actually aggravates the, the conditions of your spine. All right, we're going to talk a little bit later about how to lift in a safe way. Well, es Esmeralda Kellen, economist from Ego Focus, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Okay, folks, yeah. quick commercial break. After the break, we answer the question, how can you prevent you know, yourself from experiencing backache and how can you look after that? Please stay with us. If we're talking health, then let's talk seriously. Night Shield, embracing our members in good health since 1968. Now this is Trends, of course, your one-stop serving of all that's juicy and trending in the world of entertainment and showbiz. My name, of course, is Rafil Wemulov. I'm Dr. Silo Mutaung, and this is Health Talk. A very good morning and welcome to Media Monitor. I'm your host, Alicia Jolly. My name is Dumila Matez. William Mulebati. My name is Mpo Seru. What time is it? It's question time. For your daily dose of current affairs, tune in to the SABC News Champ. Welcome back. So lower back exercises, using the correct lifting techniques and maintaining a good posture can help us prevent backache. Now here to tell us a lot more about that is Hannah Rath. Hannah is a biokineticist from Hannah Rath Biokineticists. Welcome to Health Talk. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. And of course, we still have Dr. Louis Nell, spine surgeon from Spine Africa. Before we, we chat to you, I believe we have uh, a caller on the line. Hello, I, I just didn't quite get the name. Hello. Bongani, hello, hello, hello Bongani, from KZN. Hello, yeah? how, are how are you, how are you, how are you? Good, good, how are you? I'm all right, thank you, and hello to the panel of the doctors there. In, hello? Yes, you were listening to yes. you? Yeah. Yes, I just want to find out something. Uh, actually, it's, this is regarding to my wife, the question that I'm going to ask. Yes. She had um, a bad, uh, bad problem. That has been going on for some time. It's been a period, it's been more than like six years, you know. Right. Um, she was working for uh, a motor motor industry. Right. Whereby like she was like lifting heavy stuff and whatever. Yeah. And you know, within within the years, when she started experiencing the problem, I've been taking her to the doctors and whatever. Up until this thing gone worse, and she was admitted a year. Just like last year or something, yeah. where she had seen the orthopedic surgeon, then there was a procedure that was done on her back. Because uh, the doctors, as you know, when this whole thing started, they were saying she needs to uh, stop the, doing the job that she was doing because that is what is causing the bad problem. Mm. Now, I just want to find out, you, you know, whether it, 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 the bad problem is it a, a genetic thing. Okay. Because of the nature of work that we are doing, you know, 
Okay. All right. Th thank you very much, Bongani. Let, let's hear uh, the answer from Dr. Nell. Is it, is it genetic or is it related to the type of work that she was doing? I mean, she spent, it sounds, quite you know, many years lifting heavy objects. I think it's all of them together. Right. So you can't just say it's just the one thing. Okay. Well, let's talk you about know. age. Why, why, why should age put us at risk? Um, we, st we start aging at about 20 years of age and not much later, actually. Mm. And with the constant wear and tear over the years and the way that we use and u misuse our bodies, we actually precipitate some of these problems. Mm -hmm. um, I think, you know, a lot of these, we need to have a more holistic approach to the, to the, the problem. You know, I don't know, you know, how old she is, you know, what she weighs, yeah. and what a good general condition she is. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of conservative treatment that you can actually do you know, very early to try to make this better. You know, looking at how she works, what she does, you know, whether you can change her lifestyle, her work style, her health, yeah. strengthening her core muscles, you know, strengthening her back and so on. Sure. So it's well, a bit of a difficult thing, about but six years is a long time. It's a long need time to have indeed, yeah. Examined. Yeah. Well, talk about strengthening one's back and so on. Hannah, I mean, uh, we've heard a lot about uh, what happens at the workplace, at, at you know, uh, at home and, and, and that sort of thing. So, so, so even before we get people to a point where they, they need treatment, mm -hmm. surely the stuff that they can do to try and prevent themselves from getting um, backache. Yeah, Just take us through some of those, yeah? Most certainly. I think a lot of people make the mistake of only really seeking treatment or thinking of exercising when it's a bit too late. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to, to move when you're in pain. Mm -hmm. I think if we take an approach of looking after our spines from early on, you know, so... Yeah good lifestyle choices, making sure we're fit and strong. Also taking care of our weight, you know, if, if you tend to have a high BMI, then your, your, your back is under more pressure mm. for long periods of time. Yeah. So when you're presenting with these back issues in your 40s or your 50s, they probably started when you were 20 or 25. Okay. And just, just, just hold it there because I'd, I'd like us to then, you know, talk practically in terms of what sure. to do from an early age yes. right through to old age. But yes. let's take a call from Lesotho. This is Glenn. Glenn, welcome to Health Talk. Glenn, are you with us? Okay. Glenn, are you there? Yeah, I'm still here, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Can, can, you, can we have your question or comment, please? No, my question is one. I just want to talk to, uh, to ask Dr. Nell if it's, um, I had, like I said, I had my, um, I had a problem with my lower back. Yes. It's been a while now. It's been some time now. It's been a while. Yeah, what's and, a while? Uh, excuse me? What is a while? A while is about 20 years now. Okay. You know, and I took it for granted, I think. But uh, I went to a physio. You know, they, they, you know, they did what they had to do. But when I came out of it, I came out limping, you know. And uh, gradually now I realize that as, as time goes on, my left side is weaker than my right side. Okay. And wow. I never had a stroke or anything like that. And I tried everybody asking, you know, I went to all the specialists. I don't seem to get the answer. Okay. All but right. it all started out with my, my lower back uh, our pain. Do you want to ask one? Or? Yes. Yeah. I, I think, you know, one of the most important things is, you know, if you treat somebody conservatively, you know, they need to get better. Mm. So if you s start progressing or getting worse or not getting better, that's a sort of a danger sign that somebody should to be examined better. Mm. And having starting to get a neurological deficit with a weakness, you know, you should be examined because there's something worse wrong that's not going to be at least... You need to find out what's the problem, mm. you know, before treating it. Yeah. So he needs to go and so, see a specialist. So he needs to go and get Maybe investigated he's GP first and, and, and so on. A specialist. All right. Okay, let's get back to that issue now. From a young age, how do you, you know, look after your back? So I think from a young age, it's, it's important to be active. Yeah. It's important to engage in the correct kind of activities and exercises. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people expect themselves to be able to um, run or do contact sports, but they might not necessarily have the foundation sport, uh, mm. sorry, foundation strength right. to, to maintain their, their back through the sport. Okay. So I think it's important to, to understand to, yeah. that that's important. Yeah. yeah. I, I know that we're talking about these things, yes. but, I, but I'm sure people watching this program would like some kind of demonstration. Absolutely. Can you perhaps, if you don't mind, just demonstrate to us just how you know, these exercises should be performed. And, and I guess the other issue to talk about is the safety. Mm, absolutely. You know? we, 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 can, we can do it and, and, and you know, perhaps take us through as, as you're walking, yeah? Super. Okay. All right. 
So I think the most important thing to understand is not everyone can do all of these exercises. Some of them cause pain and discomfort. So when you're looking at your back, make sure that you, you do these gently and slowly. A useful one, you can lie flat on, on your back. I've got my colleague Willem here to just demonstrate. And it's a, basically it's a stretch, a stretch of the leg. So I would encourage you to use a belt or a, a towel just to stretch the hamstring muscles. So you pull it just as high as you're able to. Ideally 90 degrees is wh where you want to see it, but if you need to stop where you know your limit is. And it's important not to feel back pain when you're doing this. It's actually a leg stretch, but leg stretch, leg, leg flexibility is important for lower back strengthening and lower back functioning. So this is quite a nice one and you can do it on both sides. The other option is a rotational stretch. So you can cross the one leg over the body Again, making sure that you don't get too much pain with this and gently rotating the knee down to the floor. You'll notice that it's probably the hip muscles that are stretching here again, but it's important to loosen the structures around the lower back, not only just in the back itself. So it's a gentle movement here, a gentle rotation to get some flexibility in the spine. And then another nice technique I like to suggest to my patients is just hugging both of their knees into their chest. So while lying down, just gently hugging them in, relaxing the neck on the floor or on the bed, and just pulling them in. It's almost like you're hugging your, your muscles in, and you'll probably feel a stretch in the lower back with this one. All right. Just now we spoke about the importance of age. Mm. Now, are these safe for the elderly? I mean, what, what simple exercises can the elderly do to try and strengthen their backs. Okay, so that's a, that's a very good question. I think the elderly battle sometimes to go down onto the floor and to get up off the floor safely. Right. So these exercises can be done seated also. It's quite easy for, for one just to pop your ankle over your knee and just press your, your knee down like that. So that will create a little bit of a pelvic stretch in the glute area. And it's not that difficult to get in and out of this position. It's just important to be done slowly for the elderly. Mm. Um, the hamstring stretch, it, it would be fine to just prop your leg up on a chair and then just gently lean forward as if you're trying to touch your, your toes, but just very, very gently. Again, you don't need to go down onto the floor for that one, so that's quite useful. Um, I think the elderly, and, and anyone I suppose, um, that's got pain just needs to make sure that they don't push beyond the pain because that would be counterproductive in this case. Okay, one last thing in the last 30 seconds. We spoke about the importance of lifting things properly, you know, if you're lifting heavy weights. Yes. Do you want to perhaps just show us the correct way of lifting, lifting heavy objects? Yeah? So if you imagine this is a heavy box or something, like a, I don't know, a box of, of something that you don't often pick up, so it's a weight that you're not used to, to, to carrying. The way you don't want to do it is you don't want to bend your back because that's going to be putting the pressure on the actual back itself. You, you want to utilize your legs because your legs are the, where your strength comes from. So if you can bend your legs, keep your back straight and pick the object up close to your body, you'll find that your lower back is strained less and your legs take the work. So this is the, the correct way of doing it. Mm. And again, putting it down slowly, we bend your knees and, and pop the surface down slowly and gently so that you don't strain those lower back muscles. Mm. Seems like there's a lot that we can talk about. And, and of course, the issue around, you know, body weight. We've spoken a bit about body weight as a risk factor. Yes, most that, certainly. That uh, it should all be all-encompassing, that, you know, people look at, uh, if you're overweight, lose a little bit of weight, yeah? Yeah, sometimes just losing a few kilograms can just take a little bit of stress off your back and you end up moving a little bit better and moving easier yeah. when you're not um, overweight. And, and yeah, it could be a simple factor like that. Can, it can just reduce your weight by, or your pain by a little bit, which would make a big difference. Okay. Hannah Rath, biokineticist. Hannah Rath, biokineticist. Thank you. Thank you so much for your contribution. Thank you for having okay, us. Okay, folks, time for a quick commercial break. And when we're back, we now talk about treatment options for low backache. Please stay with us. Shield Medical Scheme. We don't just talk health, we do health. MedShield Medical Scheme doesn't just cover you when you're ill, we'll help you stay well. From the moment you start your day. My biggest question is how I got myself here on time. Yeah. This is so <laughs> early for a comedian, I've got to be honest. We are there for you. We bring your morning into perspective. As news breaks throughout the morning is an investment into the future of the airports company, but also the future of our children, the future of our country, the future of the transport sector. 
We'll make sure that you get the full story. Give us quality music. Load shedding. Listen, this winter. It's a thing of the past. And you can count on the weather team with expertise. Join us live at 6 a.m. daily. Welcome back to Health Talk. We're talking low back ache. And when it comes to treating low back ache, there are a number of avenues, a number of options that are open to people, including medication, rest, exercise, and I suppose in extreme cases, surgery. Uh, and here to tell us more about that, we still have Dr. Louis Nell, spinal surgeon, Spine Africa, and we're now joined by Ron Vinis. Ron is a physiotherapist based at the Morningside Sports Clinic. Welcome to Health Talk, Ron. Thank you, sir. All right. Um, you know, we, we spend quite a lot of time obviously talking about, you know, describing low back ache and what causes and so on. And now here's somebody who now starts experiencing, um, um, you know, low back ache. Um, first of all, are there things that people can do at home before they come and see you? Yeah, that all depends. I suppose we should perhaps um, make a decision to, that we, we, we should make a difference between if it's, acute very severe low back pain or where, where back ache or whether it's a mild or moderate chronic low back pain yeah if it's the severe acute type yeah. then uh, it could be caused by a radiculopathy or a, or a, or a disc protrusion yeah. uh, in which case there's not that much one can do about it themselves yeah. uh, other than resting it in the most comfortable position and okay. and see your doctor for for analgesia and um, I, I suppose in that case the question then should be what are those red flags? What are those things that should indicate to one that, look, it's now time for me to go and consult? I'll hold that off because we have Morita from Cape Town. Morita, welcome to Health Talk. Hello, doctor. Thank you. Good mm -hmm. morning to the panel. Mm -hmm. I just want to ask the doctor, um, it's actually for my daughter. Yeah. Uh, she's had a problem always with back pain, lower back pain. And the said I think it's called the tailbone, right at the bottom. Uh, so it is sort of growing skew. So, sorry, I, I didn't get that. What's happening at the lower, lower bone? Um, I think they said it's growing up at skew. Okay, all right. And yeah. uh, she went for a small op now and said something about they inserted two needles in and see if that can't help before they actually have an operation or something. Okay, how old is your daughter? Uh, she's 30 years old. Oh, okay, all right, okay. All right, thank you for your question. Um, it, it sounds like she had an infiltration or something done, yeah. okay, because they put in needles. Um, well, yeah, so it's the way I understand it, it, it looks like she, sounds she, like she, she's she got a scoliosis. A scoliosis, yeah. So with scoliosis, you know, if you look at the spine in general, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that's asymptomatic with not pure straight spines. Right. Okay. Um, the one thing, if it's noticed or if it gives pain or if there's any genealogical deficits, she needs to be examined to have a proper baseline, to find out that's not something more seriously wrong. Yeah. And it's very seldom that we need to do surgery for that very fast. So, so, okay. so in this instance, if you assume that, you know, surgery was done for scoliosis to try and sort the back ache. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, the, the, the inserted pins or, or something. Oh, they said inserted pins. Correct. But yeah. it's screws. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so in this instance, you know, what, what, should, what should happen? Um, we, we, there, there's a couple of reasons why we do scoliosis surgery. Yeah. You know, one is them for pain because of the curve of the spine. You can actually get pain with a, a bad alignment yeah. um, for cosmetic, cosmetic reasons yeah. or neurological deficits because there can other reasons like um, abnormal vertebral bodies, you know, um, problems in the spinal cord itself that actually precipitates the skewness or some other neurological diseases also yeah. that can give you a, a scoliosis. Okay. You know, so I'm not sure exactly what the diagnosis was initially, why she had the scoliosis. It can so be just... So, um, so, so I'd imagine she needs to she just need to go back and, yeah, and, and just so. re reconsult, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Ron, um, so, so the question is, you know, what are those things that people should, should, you know, take seriously, as it were, to say, this is not just mild pain, I need to go and consult someone? 
I think if it's a very acute, severe pain, it would be something to worry about if there is uh, um, referring pain down the leg if it's the lower back or down the arms if it's the neck, yeah. um, in which case there may well be a, a, an encroachment onto, onto a nerve or a nerve root. Mm -hmm. uh, if there is a loss of sensation in the legs, if there is a weakness in the legs, because as soon as you start compressing a nerve, you're going to either have pins and needles, pain, uh, loss of strength or, or, or numbness and, right. and between those things those are the more serious uh, aspects of, of backache that you should probably as soon as possible consult a uh, medical practitioner. All right. also, and I'm, and I'm, I'm probably asking so you a silly question. Yeah? And yeah. also if these other things associated with it, whether the patient feels ill, you know if she said you know but I picked something up and I did something and I had pain then you can treat it conservatively but if she can't explain why she just suddenly had that pain right. you know it should be looked at. Okay. You know, if she's got fever or something associated with the pain, you know, so there's other things that you need to look at properly. That yeah. is correct. The other difficult question is who should they problems. consult? Mm. Often people will go to your pharmacist to, to try and get some tablets. I, I imagine you see quite a lot of people with mild low backache. Just tell us about, you know, the range of uh, people that you see. Well, the, I think the people who have phoned in today already highlights the uh, difficult part of backache. There's so yeah. many causes why one can have backache, right, right down to uh, perhaps even organ uh, um, causes. Uh, some are musculoskeletal in origin, some are not. Um, ideally, one would see a, a primary health care provider, a, a first-line practitioner, such as a doctor, a physiotherapist, perhaps a chiropractor. Um, a pharmacist may well be able to help with analgesia, but will mm. not be able to help identify the, the, the cause of the, of the pain. Okay. So, so, I guess I was trying to get back to the issue around uh, low back ache and conservative treatment, because there's a notion out there that uh, most low back ache will, will sort itself out it's you true. Know, via mm. conservative means. Mm. Yeah. No, it's definitely okay. Yeah. Uh, yes, in, in a lot of cases that is, that is, that is indeed the case. Um, and in a lot of, uh, we've now touched on ergonomics, we've touched on exercises, we've touched on lifestyle, and if the cause of the uh, pain lies in the musculoskeletal system, for example, yes, by exercising, by adopting a better posture at work, by um, living a certain lifestyle, if one can eliminate the factors that are causing the pain, such as perhaps certain muscles that are tight, other muscles that are weak, um, one can very often recover conservatively, yes. Okay. Most of the professionals, you know, all the subspecialities are, you know, are knowledgeable enough, you know, to see that there's something seriously wrong that the patient should go to the medical side of it. But I think one of the most important things is to make diagnosis initially properly. Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, that's probably the best guy to go to is a general practitioner who's got the widest sort of a teaching. And, you know, we should prefer the patient to the physiotherapist to ever treating conservative treatment if there's not something seriously wrong. Okay. We have about a minute or so left. Let's talk about surgery. Who needs surgery for low backache? Um, in most common uh, type of surgeries, I'm not talking about tumors, cancers, and those type of things. The chronic degenerative back pains that we see, the patients that need surgery just get to the point where they just can't get away without it. It's a quality of life thing. So it's very seldom that we need to make a decision like this to do surgery. Mm. These people have gone through conservative treatment. They're not getting better. They're getting worse. Cost them a lot of money. Um, they um, um, take a lot of time off work. You know, so it just becomes impractical treating those patients conservatively. Yeah. Um, that type of surgery, you know, very much depends on the patient's quality of life. Yeah. So the only one that can actually make that decision is the patient themselves. Mm. You know, we tend to adapt to pain and how we manage this. And that's part of the problem because you tend to, you know, give up certain stuff in your life. So what you think of conservative treatment or, or equality of life is, is very, very personal. Mm. Um, if the patient has got a treatable, surgical, treatable, you know, problem, you know, um, and we can make the patient much better, yeah. you know, quality of life wise, that is when we will start doing surgery. Right. The one question I've just had is, is about how well informed patients are, you know, people judging by the number of calls that we've had people, you know, saying um, I've had surgery, people don't seem to know sure. exactly what is done to them. Sure. What can be done about that? I think creating awareness, um, mm. because it's very, like most other medical problems, it's very much of a multidisciplinary input. Yeah. 
Uh, it just happens to be the right time that you invited some of us on the show today because uh, as happens every year, this coming week from the 5th to the 11th of September is National Physiotherapy Back Week. So if people have got any questions, one can please contact the Zurich Society for Physiotherapy. If right. one needs to either consult a physio or somebody come and talk at a school, do some explanations about what happens in the spine, etc. Right. Okay. Of course, I think that's the best note to live it at. Uh, Ron Venus, physiotherapist, Morningside Sports Clinic. Dr. Louis Nell, spinal surgeon, Spine Africa. Thank you so much for your contribution. It's been awesome. Yeah. All right, folks, it's on that note that we'll come to the end of our show today. Uh, remember to please join us again next week at SABC News. And uh, please share your views and comments with us via our Facebook page, SABC Health Talk, and follow us on Twitter at SABC Health Talk. And remember that today's show will be repeated at 2 p.m. And then again at Thursday morning at 5 a.m. I'm Dr. Salam Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your calls. And please do take care of that back.